Hello everyone. So I wanted to do a video today specifically about my experience with Mark Lieta from Soft White Underbelly. I've noticed there's a lot of videos and a lot of threads of just hate and drama surrounding him and Soft White Underbelly, so I wanted to talk about that for a little bit. Um, if you want to support me or the channel, the information is in the description, but do not feel obligated. So... I watched a lot of Soft White Underbelly when I got into my my last accident. So my tibia fibula was broken. It was pretty bad and I wasn't allowed to put any weight on it for I think like 12 weeks. So it was pretty bad. I was in a lot of pain. I'm basically on a recliner in front of a TV. That's basically what I could do. So I started watching a lot of his videos. I think one of the first ones I came upon was Spooky, which I thought was pretty interesting and then I found Hutch and others and I liked it. Uh, it's a big learning experience seeing what happens when parents don't do a great job or don't know how to do a great job and uh, genetics I guess there's, it's a combination of, of nature and nurture. So he posted a video it's I think one of those that he does yearly or every six months or whatever, just explaining how things are going, that sort of thing. And at the end, he said, if you have a video, if, or if you have a story, or it would be interesting, you can contact me. So I thought my story was a little different, you know, being, getting into a horrific car accident and losing my son and becoming disabled from it. So I sent him an email, you know, did the little video of myself, and 12 hours later, he contacted me and said that he would like to do the video and I think it was the next day um, I was driving to Santa Monica which is one of his studios to do the interview uh, he's a very nice guy um, kind of all business but just, just nice and so I sat there and just told him my story and he broke down a few times. You could see him crying and wiping his eyes. You know my story was affecting him. You know, he's a human being. He has a heart. And after the video, he I think he said he was sorry and he gave me a hug. And he said, let me give you some gas money. And it was more than enough for gas. But he didn't have to do it. And it was nice of him. It was basically five hours of driving. Two and a half hours both way if there's no traffic. I think I messaged him one other time, well, two other times. One time I told him uh, that he did a good job editing, that I didn't think that would be a very good speaker and that I was happy with the way the, the video came out. Thank you for the opportunity. And then I sent him another message uh, saying Happy New Year's. And that was the last time I talked to him. So a lot of these videos started popping up when I would type in soft white underbelly and under, uh, on YouTube and it would say, uh, like, you know, Mark Light, uh, exploitation, uh, exploiting the Whitakers, uh, doing this, doing that, and <laughs> I think I'm a pretty good judge of character, and Mark Light is none of those things. He basically has a a job where he interviews people. I came to him. Um, he didn't have to pay me anything because I came to him, but he still you know, gave me some gas money. And I told my story. And the reason why I wanted to tell my story is because I wanted it. I figured if it stops one person from drinking and driving, that it did its job. You know, it saved a life. And before he interviewed me, we talked about the importance of unconditional love you know, in a kid's life and how that really shapes them. And basically, he wants to make the world a better place. He wants to leave an imprint or show people what happens when you don't get love or more importantly, unconditional love in life. So, uh, here, pause one second. Sorry about that. With the two strokes, I kind of lose my train of thought sometimes. But when my video posted, 
there was a lot of comments. A lot of, I would say 99% were good, but there's a couple of, a few comments where people are just, just horrible. It's almost like they're trying to hurt your feelings and, and they didn't watch the whole video. And Mark talks about that in one of his interviews uh, by somebody else where basically if you want to see the evil of the world, just read YouTube comments for a few minutes. It just, some people are just pretty horrible. Well, anyway, I'm going to share a few of the comments. And it's, this, this is just a few of the comments. One person told me, thank you for posting your video, you know, I usually have a few drinks at home. And then I'll drive just a couple blocks away to like a 7-Eleven and get some more beer and then go home. It's just a few blocks away, but I'm not going to do that anymore after watching your video. That was great. So that's one person that it helped. Another person told me, I want to be a better dad. And your video really kind of opened my eyes and I'm going to try harder to be a, a better dad. So that's number two. And uh, another Another person said that um, he decided to quit drinking. He said that it wasn't completely because of my video, but my video kind of sealed the deal. He's not going to drink anymore. And there was a few others like that. So there was actually plenty of, of comments like that, saying that I have changed their lives, uh, that they're going to think differently and do things differently. You know, they want to be a better person, that kind of thing. So that's my video. Okay, my video only has... I think 302,000 views, uh, and it's I think it's been about three months since it was posted. So my video doesn't have a lot of views compared to other videos, especially when the chicks are hot, that sort of thing, or the the drama videos. You know which ones they are. But if my video with just that many likes has affected that many people. Think about all the hundreds of his other videos that have changed people. I know that there's been kids who are thinking about doing drugs and they saw the video and saw what happens when you get addicted and they said, you know what, yeah, I'm not going to do this. There's probably been Johns that saw the videos of the prostitutes and said, you know what, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to have prostitutes anymore. You know, seeing how their lives are and I, I don't want to participate in that that sort of thing and it seems like the Whitakers brought up a lot of drama for Mark <laughs> nobody would even know who the Whitakers were if it wasn't for Mark you know people don't realize how hard it is to run a business I had a business uh, before the accident and it's difficult. In the end, all the only person you can blame is yourself. So you have to work really, really hard. And things always happen that don't work out well. There's always some kind of issue that you have to deal with. California isn't a very pro-business state. You get taxed to death. It's very difficult. So just think about this. Think about how much money Mark spent on airline tickets to go see the Whitakers. Having to rent a car. Blowing money on gas being hustled constantly for money. Everybody wants to ask Mark for money. Imagine how taxing that is on you. I'm sure Mark is pretty well off, but he's not as well off as everybody thinks. I mean, like I said, California is a very difficult state to do business in. Remember, he has two studios. Besides, I'm pretty sure he owns a house. Think about all the money that goes into just that. All the time that goes into editing, maybe having your equipment stolen, which has happened to him. What if this? What if that? Things always happen. It's very difficult to run a business. Doing a new video, his phone's blowing up from the new person asking him for money. Let's say he goes down Skid Row, an old interview sees him and wants money. Imagine how he must feel on that level. But if you really look at the big picture and do the math, the hundreds of videos that, he, that he's done, and all the comments, this guy has helped so many people. 
if he were to pass away a few years ago, I think he already left a big enough dent to help people and to show people what happens when they don't get enough love and how how exactly things happen. It's not like somebody just becomes a drug addict. You know, there's things that, that happen that get that person there. So, we should really not create drama in somebody's life or just create hate. There's people that actually created videos disrespecting this guy. I mean, they took time out of their day to badmouth him. I mean, that, that blows me away why somebody would, would do something like that. There's some pretty horrible people in the world. Rather than lift somebody up, they want to tear somebody down. Some of the comments I got were like, God damn, like how, 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 how can you say that? Like, you don't know me. And it was almost like they were just trying to hurt me or they were trying to get people to reply. Uh, they had to be sick. I don't understand why anybody would do something like that. So I covered how difficult it is to run a business. Like I said, I know how that is. Now think about this. His videos keep getting demonetized. I think I think his whole platform might be demonetized completely. I'm not sure, but you, know, you post a video thinking you're going to make a few bucks off of it, and then it gets demonetized. There's nothing now. He has, I think, like around 5.5 million subscribers to YouTube, but that doesn't mean that he has 10% of those people subscribing to his actual website where he actually makes money. And he's not charging that much. I think it's like 15 bucks a month or 100 if you subscribe for the whole year. So do the math. You know, it's, it's not a whole lot of money. And like I said, if you're making X amount in California, Basically, they're gonna take. You're gonna be taxed half of it right off the bat. You know, we're being taxed to death here. So think about all the videos that you watched and how they affected you. The videos that you maybe shared with others because they hit you in a certain way. People that you want to help, that you feel sorry for. And a few people asked him. I think he mentioned, you know, how do I help? And he said, well, start in your own area. You know, don't worry about the people that he's interviewed and stuff like that. If you live in, you know, Ohio, start helping the people you see who are homeless on the street. Or just talk to them. Sometimes they don't just want to be talked to. You know, people don't look at homeless people. They look the other way. It's like they're the, the scum of the earth. Most people are just a few paychecks away from being homeless. There's people that do not have a support system. And there's people that they cannot save money. Like, they just do not make enough. You know, things keep happening. There's inflation, and every six months your rent goes up. It's so difficult to live. It's so difficult to function and to, to live in society today and to make it. I get scared sometimes. You know, I don't know where I'm going to be. So basically, stop the hate, stop the drama, leave the dude alone, <laughs> treat people how you want to be treated. Remember the golden rule. It's still a very useful tool. Like I said, I don't know Mark. All I did was get interviewed and talk to him a few times. I think I talked to him uh, when we agreed to the interview and I texted him a few times. That was it. But I'm telling you, he's a good guy. And just focus on yourself. Don't worry about him. And Mark, thank you for all you do. You've made a huge difference in the world. And just keep doing what you're doing. If that's what you want to do. But I know you helped get my story out. And a lot of people have changed because of it. And I can't imagine how much good you've done with all your other videos. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time.